So welcome, welcome everyone to our special covenant service. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the tradition of the covenant service, it's something that's, uh, that happens uh, especially in Methodist churches around the wor world uh, towards the start of each year, but it's uh, one of those traditions that is valued uh, by lots of denominations too. And a covenant is essentially a relationship or a friendship that involves making promises. And today's worship is about renewing our friendship with God. And at the start of our worship, as we remember that God's covenant commitment to us never fails, we know that sometimes we can drift off course in our following of Jesus. Sometimes we can lose focus. And so we're here to refocus on what is most important. To focus on Jesus and say, more than anything else, more than gold or silver, you alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship you. We sing together uh, it's hymn number 544 in the books and the words also on the screen, as the deer pants for the water. We'll join together in our opening prayers, uh, and if you'd like to follow in the books, it's on page 282 of the Methodist worship books, but all the words uh, are on the screen and all the responses, so uh, uh, just if you'd prefer to use the books, it's uh, beginning on page 282 of the Methodist worship books. So let us pray. Glory to the Father, the God of love, who created us, 
who continually preserves and sustains us, who has loved us with an everlasting love and given us the light of the knowledge of his glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Blessed be God forever. Glory to Jesus Christ, our Saviour, who though he was rich, yet for our sake became poor and was tested in every way as we are, yet without sin, who proclaimed the good news of the kingdom and was obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross, who was raised from the dead and is alive forever and has opened the kingdom of heaven to all who trust in him, who is seated at God's right hand in glory and will come to be our judge. Blessed be God forever. Glory to the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, by whom we are born into the family of God and made members of the body of Christ, whose witness confirms us, whose wisdom teaches us, whose power enables us, who will do for us more than we can ask or think. Blessed be God forever. To the one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be praise and glory forever. Amen. God of grace, through the mediation of your Son, you call us into a new covenant. Help us, therefore, to draw near with faith and join ourselves in a perpetual covenant with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, here are readings from the scriptures now, firstly from the prophet Jeremiah and then from the epistle to the Romans. The first reading is from Jeremiah <clears throat> chapter 31, verses 31 to 34. And you can find that on page 766 of the Old Testament if you want to follow. The Lord says, the time is coming when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the old covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and led them out of Egypt. Although I was like a husband to them, they did not keep that covenant. The new covenant that I will make with the people of Israel will be this. I will put my law within them and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. None of them will have to teach his fellow countrymen to know the Lord, because all will know me, from the least to the greatest. I will forgive their sins and I will no longer remember their wrongs. I, the Lord, have spoken. You'll find the second reading on page 200 of the New Testament section, Romans chapter 12, and we'll begin at verse 1. So then, my brothers, because of God's great mercy to us, I appeal to you, offer yourselves as a living sacrifice to God, dedicated to his service, and pleasing to him. This is the true worship that you should offer. Do not conform yourselves to the standards of this world, but let God transform you inwardly by a complete change of your mind. Then you will be able to know the will of God 
what is good and is pleasing to him and is perfect. Amen. Thanks be to God. There are certain football players that get described as being a manager's dream. And one of them is Rachel Daly, a key player in the England women's football team as well as playing currently for Aston Villa. She's also a great down-to-earth Yorkshire lass from Harrogate. Not that that's relevant, but thank you. <laughs> And the reason that Rachel Daly is described as a manager's dream is because she is prepared to play in any position on the team. She's happy in defence or midfield or up front. And when she was interviewed about this before the World Cup last summer, she said, I'm not bothered. I'm really not. I think you guys care more where I play than I do. I'm genuinely happy to play in any role. Obviously playing in the number nine role is something I do week in, week out, so it's a little more natural to me. But whatever role I'm given, I'll do it to the best of my ability. Rachel Daly is happy to say to the England manager, Serena Wiegmann, Wherever you may place me, I'll give my absolute best. I just want to give my all for the team. Now, this is my uh, 10th covenant service here. And so by now, some of you will uh, remember that I usually focus on a different, uh, uh, different part of the covenant prayer each year. Uh, and the phrase I'm focusing on this time, the phrase I was drawn to, uh, is this one. Wherever you may place me. In the prayer, we express our willingness to serve God in whatever situation we're placed in. Wherever our heavenly manager may place us in the team of God's church, or in God's mission field. And as I was thinking and praying about this service, the phrase that actually popped into my mind was from the older version of the covenant prayer, which says this, rank me with whom you will. Now, although we've been using the newer version of the covenant prayer since the 1990s, somehow it was those words that I've probably not said since I was in my 20s that came to my mind. Now, perhaps that was just the random workings of my brain, or perhaps the spirits bringing to mind for a reason. I'd like to think it was the latter. And as I reflected on that phrase, rank me with whom you will, it struck me that the newer version of the prayer doesn't quite convey the joys and the struggles and the sacrifice of our commitment to Christian community quite so effectively as those more traditional words. Although in one sense, the covenant prayer is our personal response to God's faithfulness and God's amazing love in Jesus. We don't make that response in isolation. We make that response as part of a community of disciples of Jesus, as part of a local congregation and as part of the wider church. It's personal, but not private. And an essential part of our covenant relationship with God 
is a commitment to Christian community, to working out our covenant commitment to Christ in partnership with others, whoever they may be. Sometimes that's a joy, sometimes it's a struggle. Rank me with whom you will. I remember when I was at school or at college, always being irritated and annoyed whenever we were given a group assignment or a group project to do. Especially if this this was going to be part of the final mark for the course. I was irritated partly because we never got to choose who we worked with. We were allocated into a group by the teacher. And there were always people in that group whose ideas you thought were a bit daft. And more often than not, at least one person in the group who you just knew would end up doing virtually nothing, but still end up getting the same mark as you. I didn't think it was fair. I was much happier working on an essay or an assignment on my own choosing my own topic, doing my own research, and getting the mark that I deserved. But of course, in hindsight, I realise part of the reason for those group projects was not about the mark, but about preparing us for the world of work, where we would have to work with teams that we did not choose where we would have to learn to compromise, to learn the social skills of getting along and working well with all kinds of people. And perhaps there were lessons for the world of church relationships too. Rank me with whom you will. The call to offer our lives as a living Sacrifice, as we heard in our reading from Romans 12, is also a call to love those who we sometimes find it difficult to love. To forgive those who have hurt or offended us. And to work with those who we might not instinctively choose to work with. Compromising our own preferences for the sake of of the mission of God. When John Wesley introduced the covenant service, he was partly drawing on biblical language that sees the relationship between the church and God as being a bit like a marriage relationship. Our reading from Jeremiah was just one of those readings. A covenant with God and a covenant with God's people. A marriage. And the very first covenant prayer involved the words of taking Christ as my head and husband. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, at all times and conditions. To love, honour and obey thee before all others and this to the death, mirroring the words of the marriage vows of the day. I got married to Tracy on the 7th of September 1991, 32 years and five months ago. And yes, that really is me uh, in that picture. Tracy and I rarely argue. But I'd say that most of the arguments that we've had in our 32 years of marriage came in those early years of marriage. As we worked through all those compromises that are essential to make a relationship work. As I discovered that the ways things had been done in the Hume household in which I had grown up 
which I assumed must be the normal and the right way of doing things, was not necessarily the way things had been done in the Bunn household in which Tracy had grown up. I mean, some of them were, were trivial things, like what time we got up on a weekend. I'd always been used to a long lying on a Saturday morning. If I was up before lunchtime, you were lucky. But Tracy was up at 8 a.m. And so we had to find a compromise with that. Some things were much less trivial than that. But our marriage and our love needed the sacrifice of compromise. The words of the hymn that we'll sing at the end of my sermon were actually originally part of a poem that Charles Wesley wrote for his wife, Sally. But when his brother John saw the poem, he thought, I'll nick that. Some of those words could apply just as well to our commitment to following Christ together as a church. So he adapted that poem written for a marriage into a hymn for the people of God. And it contains these wonderful words. Why hast thou cast our lot in this same age and place? And why together brought to see each other's face? Why has God brought together this group of people in this time and place? We have lots and lots in common, but we're also very different in many ways. We'll have different ideas and preferences and opinions on many things. And yet somehow we are one body United in Christ. And somehow, in the mystery of God's plans, together we play an important part in the purposes of God. Rank me with whom you will. Wherever you may place me, in all that I do and in all that I may endure. Offer yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. So as we prepare to share together in the covenant prayer, we'll sing together the words of uh, Charles Wesley's hymn, or Charles Wesley's poem to his wife that uh, John Wesley adapted for a congregation. Thou God of truth and love. It's number 620 in the books and there on the screen.
Covenant service is one of those services that some people absolutely love. There are other people that actually avoid it because they find the covenant prayer difficult. I think it's worth saying at this point that everybody finds the covenant prayer difficult. They're challenging words to say. And those of us that have said it many times as we return to it each year, we realise we're definitely not there yet in living up to this promise. But it's a yearly reminder of what we're aiming for. And with God's grace at work in us, we may grow a little closer to that this year. So if this is something that's new to you, it is not compulsory to say the covenant prayer. You may on this occasion just want to look at it or others say it and think about what it might say to you. Perhaps you're not ready yet to say those words, but perhaps God may be calling you to a deeper commitment to him. So for those of you who are Following in the books, uh, we're on page 285 now of the Methodist worship books. God made a covenant with the people of Israel, calling them to be a holy nation, chosen to bear witness to his steadfast love by finding delight in the Lord. The covenant was renewed in Jesus Christ, our Lord, in his life, work, death and resurrection. In him, all people may be set free from sin and its power and united in love and obedience. In this covenant, God promises us new life in Christ. For our part, we promise to live no longer for ourselves, but for God. We meet, therefore, as generations have met before us, to renew the covenant which bound them and binds us to God. Let us then seek forgiveness for the sin by which we have denied God's claim upon us. Let us pray. God of mercy, hear us, as we confess our sins. For the sin that has made us slow to learn from Christ, reluctant to follow him, and afraid to bear the cross. Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive. For the sin that has caused the poverty of our worship, the formality and selfishness of our prayers, our neglect of fellowship and the means of grace, and our hesitating witness for Christ. Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive. For the sin that has led us to misuse your gifts, evade our responsibilities, and fail to be good stewards of your creation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive. For the sin that has made us unwilling to overcome evil with good, tolerant of injustice, quick to condemn, and selfish in sharing your love with others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive. We say together, have mercy on me, O God, in your constant love, in the fullness of your mercy, blot out my offences, wash away all my guilt, and cleanse me from my sin. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Give me the joy of your help again and strengthen me with a willing spirit.
If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, to all who truly repent, this is his gracious word. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Thanks be to God. If you're able, would you like to stand for the covenant prayer? Sisters and brothers in Christ, let us again accept our place within this covenant, which God has made with us and with all who are called to be Christ's disciples. This means that by the help of the Holy Spirit, we accept God's purpose for us and the call to love and serve God in all our life and work. Christ has many services to be done. Some are easy, others are difficult. Some bring honour, others bring reproach. Some are suitable to our natural inclinations and material interests, others are contrary to both. In some we may please Christ and please ourselves. In others we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. Yet the power to do all these things is given to us in Christ who strengthens us. Therefore let us make this covenant of God our own. Let us give ourselves to him, trusting in his promises and relying on his grace. Eternal God, in your faithful and enduring love, you call us to share in your gracious covenant in Jesus Christ. In obedience, we hear and accept your commands. In love, we seek to do your perfect will. With joy, we offer ourselves anew to you. We are no longer our own, but yours. I am no longer my own but yours. Your will, not mine, be done in all things. Wherever you may place me, in all that I do, and in all that I may endure. When there is work for me, and when there is none. When I am troubled, and when I am at peace. Your will be done when I am valued. And when I am disregarded, when I find fulfilment, and when it is lacking, when I have all things, and when I have nothing, I willingly offer all I have and am to serve you as and where you choose. Glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours. May it be so forever. Let this covenant now made on earth be fulfilled in heaven. Amen. Please take your seats for prayer. And if you're following in the books, we're just flicking forward to page 290. And at the foot of the page for our prayers of intercession. As we have entered this covenant, not for ourselves alone, but as God's servants and witnesses, let us pray for the church and for the world. Loving God, hear us as we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Make us all one that the world may believe. Inspire and lead all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. 
establish justice and peace among all people. Have compassion on all who suffer from any sickness, grief or trouble. Deliver them from their distress. We praise you for all your saints who have entered your eternal glory. Bring us all to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray in silence for our own needs and for those of others. Lord, our God, you have helped us by your grace to make these prayers. And you have promised through Christ our Lord that when two or three agree in his name, you will grant what they ask. And so now your servants' prayers according to their needs. In this world, grant that we may truly know you and in the world to come, graciously give us eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So we sing a hymn of commitment, a hymn recognising what is most important in our lives. Number 489 in the books, All I Once Held Dear.
The Lord has made an everlasting covenant of peace with his people. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God our Father, fountain of goodness, creator of all that is, you have made us in your own image. You have given us life and reason and love for one another, setting in our hearts a hunger for you. In darkness you are our light. In adversity and temptation our strength. You bear patiently with our folly and sin, granting us your law to guide us and your prophets to renew our faith. In the fullness of time, you came to us in love and mercy, in Jesus Christ, your living word, full of grace and truth. He lived among us, declaring your forgiveness and revealing your wisdom in works of mercy and in his words of power. For us, he suffered and died upon the cross by death, destroying death. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your people, gathered together in every time and place to glorify your holy name. With them and all the company of heaven, we join in the unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God. Pour out your spirit, that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Lord, we obey his command with this bread and this cup, by which we recall his death and resurrection, the source of our life and salvation. <coughs> Grant that we who share in this holy sacrament may be united by your spirit and grow into perfect love. Bring us with those who have done your will in every age, into the light of your presence and the joy of your kingdom. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. We say together the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours, now and forever. Amen. A 
the things of God for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. Glory to God the Father. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Those who come to me shall not hunger, and those who believe in me shall never thirst. Draw near with faith. All are welcome to receive the bread and the wine. And just to remind you, the wine is non-alcoholic. So you don't need to worry about that, especially for the children. And it doesn't matter if you've been coming to this church all your life, or if this is your first visit. Everybody, everybody is invited to share. Because this is not our table, but Christ's table. And Christ welcomes all of you. You will be served the bread and the wine in your seats by our communion stewards. Uh, and if, uh, when you receive the bread, if you'd like to just hold on to it and wait till everybody's received their piece of bread and then we'll all eat together. And the same with the wine, we all drink together as a sign of our unity in Christ. Communion stewards would like to join me. The body of Christ is broken for us. The blood of Christ was shed for us. Let us pray. Faithful God, with these holy gifts, you have fed and strengthened us in Jesus Christ, your Son. Guide us on our way, that with all your faithful people, we may come to share the feast of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Final hymn is number 503 in the books. Love divine, all loves excite. <laughs>
blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.